Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, the 21st century has been called the BioCentury, with modern ag bioscience representing perhaps the most promising area for man's advancement. Across the state, Oklahomans are revolutionizing agriculture and biosciences, literally planting the seeds for a better tomorrow by developing drought and disease resistant crops that produce larger yields to feed and fuel our world. Yet there are concerns, such work may not be sustainable. In our ongoing look at the skills gap, we focus today on the biosciences, a key industry in the state and one searching for workers. Here's our Austin Moore. In May, the hills surrounding Oklahoma City's Arcadia Lake were swarming with unusually quiet teenagers. These focused teams gather here annually because of the ground beneath their feet. This is the National FFA and 4-H Land Judging Contest. We'll have about a thousand participants, uh, judges, helpers that come from usually around 35 states. Greg Scott is a soil conservationist who helps out with this Oklahoma City-based competition. It's here because Oklahoma started it. Some of the leaders in agriculture and conservation back in the 50s proposed this contest and it grew and eventually grew into a national contest. The whole idea of teaching this to students came out of the Dust Bowl, out of the conservation needs. And the students look at a piece of land, we dig a pit and they get down in the pit and see that soil profile and then they have to make a judgment not only about the physical characteristics of the soil, the texture and structure, permeability and how much erosion has occurred there, but they have to make a recommendation for how the soil should be taken care of. Those are the two main ones, right? We're gonna look for structure change and, and color change. Carla Beatty is the education coordinator for the Oklahoma Conservation Commission. These kids have to compete in their home states, usually in their home county first, and then they usually go in Oklahoma, for instance, they go to an area contest, and then they get to go to state, and by the time they get to the state level, then this is the cream of the crop from those states. Did y'all get the moderately coarse on the soils? At today's practice round, agricultural education instructor Blake Collier is tuning up his team for the home site portion of the contest. They're working individually. Their scores, their individual scores count for uh, a team score at the end, but they can also win individual awards. We figure little quirks and stuff out and um, we tell each other and it helps the whole team out. But Looks this like is it. more than a simple contest. These students are honing a craft that combines science and the all-important soft skills so necessary in today's workforce. What did you school? 59. Jason Warren is a soil scientist with Oklahoma Cooperative Extension. Soils are complex ecosystem essentially that is influenced by chemistry, physics, and biology. The soil dictates to a great extent both water and air quality and, and it is the third resource of critical importance to the human condition. At the university level we have soil chemists, soil physicists, and, and um, soil biologists and then we have soil management guys who combine all those into uh, concepts that are used to manage the land. As you work with students, people in your program, what kind of job prospects are you finding out there for folks who want to study this and, and make it their profession? It's very broad. I mean, you can get a degree in soil science and then market that as, as critically important to any really land resource management entity. So your kids, they're finding stuff. They're not, they're not searching. Yeah, every one of, we have 70 undergraduates in our department at Oklahoma State University and when every one of them graduate, they will have a job or certainly have the opportunity to get a job in a uh, industry related to their education. Our placement is 100%. This is a trend not just in soil sciences, but across the spectrum of ag sciences. A study from Purdue University recently showed that our schools are only producing 60 to 70% of the graduates needed in the agricultural sector. Sonny Ramaswamy is the director of the USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Each year over the next five years, 
this enterprise is going to be, Food and Agricultural Enterprise, is going to be creating uh, almost 58,000 jobs per year for the next five years, projected out between 2015 and 2020. Oh, by the way, all of these agricultural colleges across America, both at the land grant universities like Oklahoma State University and, and Langston University, again in Oklahoma, all of these institutions, the sum total of graduates being produced is going to be just about 38,000 per year. And so there's again a shortfall that needs to be met. We need people that are food process engineers. We need people that are food safety specialists. We need people that are discovering new knowledge in the area of plant sciences, animal sciences, entomology, plant pathology. I can go on and on about this and we need all of these people. The agricultural enterprise is the most uh, viable, most active, most vibrant enterprise that's part of the U.S. economy. And don't think ag sciences are only for those who grew up on the farm. A large percentage of students entering this field have never set foot on one. This generation of young people that we've got, uh, that is graduating from high school that graduated a couple of years ago or graduating from high school this year, you're seeing that these young people have a, in quotes, a do-gooder attitude about them. They want to solve hunger. They want to solve poverty. They want to solve climate change. These are the things that they want to do. Back at the soils contest, you get a sense of that motivation from Hawaiian competitor, Korin Nishimoto. Well, we have a, a sort of a limited supply of land, especially in Hawaii, so you need to be able to know how we can most efficiently use the land, what you can grow on it, how we can improve the land and keep it running and have like sustainable agriculture. So for Corin and his fellow competitors, this contest may be just the start of an exciting career. If you enjoy science and you like to work outside and be involved in nature, it's very, very interesting science. Not only is it very complex if you like to really think about complex systems and the science that, that dictates how they respond, but it also provides you with an opportunity to be outside and join a component of nature. And joining me now in studio is our Austin Moore. Well, with so many ag science jobs now available, why aren't we seeing more students just go into agriculture? Well, it's easy to imagine how a high school student would overlook agriculture as a field. You know, so many of us carry a very traditional mindset about agriculture, and you just don't really understand how technological it is these days. Yeah, yeah there's still a massive industry both here in the state and across the nation. Oh, absolutely. When you look at ag receipts, and that's the value of your, your crops, your animals, as they leave that farm gate, you're looking at about $380 billion. But when you take that on through the supply chain, you go to restaurants and grocery stores, then it becomes about $2 trillion. That's more than 10% of our GDP. All right. Thank you so much, Austin. Absolutely, Rob. A little later in our show, we'll show you why what these children are up to is far from child's play. But when we return, we'll look at the investment a leading energy company is making in the FFA to develop new STEM workers.